Now, if any of you guys have ever tried to put a system into one of these or something like it, I'm sure you run into the problem where you get the engine light, the alternator light, electrical issues. Well, let's talk about that. Underneath my charging wires, which are right here, you can see that I've got a pretty uh, crazy advanced electrical system. And what I'm doing here is pulling my grounds off the alternator brackets and alternator casings and my positives off the alternator outputs going into a distribution block here which sends grounds and positives straight from this source to the back to the amplifiers right now i've got my, ba my batteries right here of course this is nothing unusual about this in car audio but the important thing is the ground the ground cable that normally comes off this battery is disconnected, but down here on the cable, if I can get it repositioned for you. So on this cable right here, <clears throat> down just a little ways, you'll see this thing right here. This guy, okay? You'll find one of these on your car on the battery cable, the negative battery cable somewhere now what this does is it measures the current going through this ground cable and that tells the computer how much amperage you're pulling and tells it how to change the voltage output on the alternate when you start the vehicle up it'll start up at like 14 and a half volts after it warms up a little bit it'll drop down to like 13 or high 12s normally normal operation without making any changes to the system and the reason it's doing that is because it's detecting that there's not much current being pulled through that ground wire and so it lowers the output of the alternator until said current increases well whenever you connect your ground here to the alternator and now you're pulling power from these brackets so it's not able to see the current that's being pulled but at the same time, it's reading the voltage dropping and changing because of the, the amplifiers, you know, hitting. That confuses the computer. The computer goes, wait a minute. The voltage is dropping, but there's not much amperage being pulled because that wire is literally not even in the circuit. And so it goes, there must be a problem. Let me turn on this light. Now, back in the old days, an alternator, the... Uh, exciter wire that told the alternator to start charging was connected through the light bulb on the dash that would uh, tell you when the alternator was broken. If you put in an aftermarket alternator, you've added a resistor to the circuit before, right? You guys have done this. Anybody who's done it knows what the resistor is. Replace the resistor with a light bulb. Then take that light bulb and string it up and run it inside the vehicle to your dash. As long as the alternator is charging, that light bulb will actually stay off. But whenever the alternator is not charging, the light bulb will come on. So, the signal wire that runs to the little resistor that's going to your alternator on old school alternators and or modern high performance aftermarket alternators that little wire is getting power from somewhere that when that comes on when you turn the ignition on it's getting key on ignition power and when the engine is not running it's going to a ground in the alternator it's going to the alternator itself which is actually grounding in there and while it's grounding that little resistor is creating a load so that you don't have a dead short it would also be a light bulb. And if it was a light bulb, it would be lit up since you have a ground on one side and a positive on the other. When you turn the engine on and you get the thing cranking, putting out power, now that wire becomes energized. And once it becomes energized, you have a positive on both sides of that resistor or that light bulb. And the light bulb would go off, meaning your alternator is charging and the light bulb is off. So everything's good. If the alternator stops charging or if the engine is turned off and the key's still on, 
Now you've got positive on one side, ground on the other, and it lights up the light bulb. Again, this is replaced with a resistor. That's how they used to work, and that's how they work on modern high output alternators also. Now, the way things work today is instead of using a light bulb in the circuit to tell you whether the alternator is working or not, they have a CAN bus with lots of sensors. And one of those sensors is that thing I showed you on the ground cable going to the factory battery. So now we know what the problem is. The question is, well, how do I fix it and still keep my awesome ground so that I have plenty of power? <sighs> Let's figure that out. Well, I'd say there's a lot of ways to answer that question. One way is to look at it like this. First, get on our wire chart, wire amperage chart, and figure out how much power the largest wire we can get to run through that bracket can transfer over a very short distance. All right, guys, <clears throat> you can't really find anything for alt gauge that's really short, but uh, at 250 to 300 amps, a four gauge will handle that much power for around a half a foot at four to seven feet, which is what I'm probably looking at. A two gauge will handle 300 amps for that distance. So an alt gauge should be able to handle 600 amps for that distance. I'm thinking that a single alt gauge will be able to handle all of my power needs for four to seven feet, which is how far I'm gonna to have to run to get through my loop and then back into the system. So, if we ran our alt gauge ground through the bracket and then immediately ran it to a distribution block and split it up so that we're carrying the current the long distance through multiple wires, well, that might solve the problem. But then again, what if when the computer sees that we're now pulling 700 amps through the wire, and there's a serious issue. <laughs> it's like, holy crap, we're pulling 700 amps through this thing. We got malfunction, 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 malfunction. But what if we do it anyway? Because why not? So upon inspecting this, this wire goes into this casing right here but I think it goes down from here I'll have to dig deeper and figure that out actually it goes into it goes into this casing right here and it's not very big what color are those wires so it looks like they're red and black and I'm also seeing a red and black wire running over there. So I'll show you. Yeah, here we go. So see, these are the wires coming out of that sensor. That's, I know it don't look black, but uh, it's a red and black wire right here. And right over there, can you guys see that? That's where the wire is going. It goes right over here and goes into that harness. And then it runs up behind there to over there. So those two wires are probably my wires. Well, if and I remove those wires from that housing, I could probably create a harness that could run across here and over. It's gonna take some thinking to figure this out. So you guys are probably asking yourself, why not just lengthen the wires to run from the sensor, make it longer so that I can run it to where it needs to be? And I may do that. But keep in mind that lengthening those wires to that sensor will also affect the reading that sensor gets, as adding the longer wire is going to create a little bit more resistance. I'm not sure how drastically that will affect it or whether it's even something to worry about, but it is a factor and I have to consider it. So the factory sensor is connected on that wire, which goes between the engine block and the battery. 
which is essentially going from the alternator negative to the battery over there. So if I went from the alternator bracket here through the sensor and then back into the system, I would effectively go on from the alternator through the sensor to the battery. It should be in the same position in the electrical circuit. The only variable is the fact that it'll go from pulling at most about 100, 120, 150 amps to somewhere around 700 to 800 amps. Should make for an interesting experiment. Man, let's make it happen. I've just got to make sure that all the grounds that are going to eventually connect to something that can connect with the positive and come back part of the circuit are going through that sensor. Right now, uh, the alternator is obviously grounded on the engine. The engine is grounded on the frame. The frame is grounded to the body. If I'm pulling the ground off the body somewhere and it's pulling the ground through all of that instead of through the wire, that's going to throw the sensor off. Just got to think about all of this stuff. Also, pulling a ground from the ground bracket through the engine to the, to the frame, to the body, to an amplifier, and also pulling a ground from the alternator bracket through a cable to the amplifier creates a ground loop, which can always introduce noise. Anytime you're wondering where that engine noise is coming from, well, you probably have something like that happening, where you've got two separate ground paths, and they're not synchronized, and so you end up with that ground loop. So what we're looking at here on the top left is the battery, and the bottom left is the alternator. The top center is the computer, and all the way to the back, on the far right, that's the amplifier. That big square in the middle is the body. And you can see me drawing this line between the alternator and the battery negative going through the sensor on the computer. Now, I know the amp is going to be drawing its negative from, say, the body, but the body should be getting its negative from the battery and shouldn't be in the circuit. So if I make... I don't think there'll be any issues with looping or with skipping the uh, skipping the sensor because all it's got to do is pick up the power going from the alternator to the battery. After that, as long as nothing is going from the alternator to a straight to a ground bypassing the sensor, we should be good. My drawing is crazy, huh? <laughs> so the question is. Um, is the sensor reading what the alternator is outputting or is it reading uh, what the battery is outputting? That's an interesting uh, difference. I mean, maybe putting the sensor on the battery's wire leading from the ground on the battery to everything in the vehicle would accomplish the goal. Um, because if you think about it, the engine is getting its ground from the alternator directly from the alternator and it's bypassing that sensor. So anything running in the engine, you know, the components in the engine and the rest of the vehicle are getting a ground directly from the alternator casing, which is not going through that sensor. The only thing that sensor is picking up is what uh, power has been going, being going through the battery. So, uh, that leads me to believe that the battery, uh, the pull from the battery is what that uh, sensor is reading. So it's basically judging how much drain is being put on the battery. And if that's the case, all I need to do is put the sensor on the ground wire coming from the battery going to everything else. If you guys want to see the part where I change the wiring and solve the issue or totally freak out the computer, maybe both, <laughs> be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Stay up to date on all the craziness that goes on in the car audio enthusiast life.
Peace, guys.